I am safe and secure in the shadow of his wings. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. But then the question is, where is the secret place of the Most High? Because it says, it shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a place in God, in his presence, where no enemy can touch you. Not even Boko Haram. Father, we thank you. Keep us eternally in your presence. Hide us in that secret place. Show us how we can remain planted there and never plucked out by the hands of the wicked one. We thank you, Father, and give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we clap for Judah today. Thank you for inspiring us and for reminding us that there is a secret place where we need to be hidden. It has been an interesting week for us as a nation. I'm sure all of you are aware. It's a week when we've not only been in the eye of the storm, but we've been in the eye of the media like has never been in the history of Nigeria. I believe absolutely that it is for good. God spoke a word to us this year. He said, there will be chaos, but out of chaos, he'll bring order. It was such a tremendous blessing to see that what has snowballed into a global movement was spearheaded by women and not men. And I will tell you why. If men had spearheaded it, they would have been arrested. But it's difficult to go and harass women on the streets. It, it, it is it sounds humane to throw tear gas where men are gathered. But that's not what we want to do when women get on the streets and they begin to demand that their leadership does the right thing. And I think that this is a new strategy that we need to begin to adopt. It was good to see Pastor Esther on Channels TV, you know, just holding the microphone and saying, we want our girls back. A very simple message. Hashtag. But you know, the more I interact with Nigerians, the more I realize that we've got a long way to go. On Wednesday, we didn't have service here, and I'd announced that those of you in the house that are passionate about uh, not just praying together, but of us coming together to begin to pray and ask the Lord for strategies and what we must do in order to turn our nation around. And we had that meeting from about 5 to 8 on Wednesday, and it was really tremendous to hear people talk. Uh, very heartbreaking to know that vested interests would not make things work as long as they remain there. That you can have a good idea, but once the pockets of certain people are not going to be affected by it, even if it's going to benefit all Nigerians, it will be pushed aside. It's interesting to watch leadership in our nation change from one policy to another, there was a time, and just recently we heard about cassava bread. But what happened to it? 
discarded. Uh, I ate cassava bread at, at some gathering sometime last year, and it was interesting that you really couldn't tell the difference. But those who control the wheat and the flour industry would make sure that as good as a policy that is, it wouldn't work. I was invited to the World Economic Forum platform and there was a session that held on Wednesday and I was invited there. And it basically had to do about, you know, trade industry, ICT, and so on and so forth. But what's interesting for me that when I went to Kaduna on Thursday to go and minister at Lighthouse, I was seeing the carcasses of industries that had shut down. Some of them were furniture industries. One of the largest probably in Nigeria, KFCC, shut down. Another the Kaduna textiles and Ariwa textiles. And do you know what made them shut down? One of us here went to China and he said to me, you know, when we were talking, when I was there before I left them, he said, I saw Hollandis for 4,000 naira. Now, how much is this sold here? Just, just leave that. The, the industries that were producing these things could not produce at that level. People were smuggling it in and destroyed those industries. Not only that, I remember when Ariwa Textile shut down, they had to lay the off, I think, about 4,000 people. Now, 4,000 people multiplied by probably five or six because uncles, aunts, parents benefit from just one individual. So you can look at the cumulative effect and the impact upon families simply because we cannot patrol our borders and enforce smuggling. There are lots of other factors. While we're being encouraged to be entrepreneurs, we must know that the greatest battle we have to fight is, is, is with respect to leadership and how leadership or what leadership is doing to protect such entrepreneurs and such industries because if you're not protected, you go down. But here's what I need us to understand, that there must be a paradigm shift. That's the entirety of John chapter 3 for you. Except a man be born again. It's paradigm shift. Just to show us that every one of us can relate to it, Jesus at the close of that discourse said, if I have told you natural things and you don't understand, is it the spiritual things that I'm going to talk about that you understand. So when he was talking about you must be born again, he was simply saying, I've just spoken earthly things to you. I was in Uyo and I was speaking to a leader. And this is where, for me, the church needs a lot of help. A leader in the church. And we were talking about our nation. And we touched on the subject of Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. And the issue was, he said, and he quoted from the law, he that must come to equity must come with clean hands. But how can a man like that who has been accused and allegedly reported that he's had some financial misappropriation under his time in the CBN, how can a man like that accuse the government of stealing 20 billion. And I said, this is where the problem is. There's only one question and there's only probably two answers. Is 20 billion missing or not? 20 billion times 170 is 3.4 trillion. Even if the man stole 40 billion, is that comparable or just, and nobody's trying to say, he, you get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to speak for him. But then we leave 
the majors and we focus upon minors and I really wonder what the problem is with us. So uh, what he was saying is throw that nonsense away. Because that some things cannot be said. But those who know, know where it is. Amen. Can a Christian join the military? And if they send you to some Shambisha forest and they put a gun in your hand and you see Boko Haram shooting at you, will you pray or shoot back? Now, I'm going somewhere with this. If you kill 20 people, would you still make heaven? Uh, they're just saying yes. <laughs> they, they don't. Hello. Hallelujah. Let me ask you again. If in the course of that you kill 20 people, oh, Pastor Fred, good to see you. Hey, you've changed. London is good. <laughs> um, just come up here. Just come. The great man of God doing, doing great. No, come and sit in front. He's doing great. My, my wife has gone to minister. She won't be back, so you can take, take her seat. I've seen a lot of fire in Joss. <laughs> if you kill 20 people in the course of that, do you think God will be pleased with you or displeased? The defense of nations is embedded in the context of scripture. And whether you're a Christian or not, to protect the sovereignty and the territory of your nation is legal. So in the course of doing that, if you engage the enemy and kill the enemy, you will still make heaven. But now if you take a gun and leave this church and just begin to show, shoot people randomly, that's a totally different scenario. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because many believers don't understand this. What about a Christian who believes that stepping out of his territory and to protest on the streets the wrongs of leadership is the way to bring about transformation? Is that person still operating within the context of scripture? I think sometimes we get too religious. One thing I can tell you, if women did not go on the streets, there would have been zero or no effort by the leadership of our nation to do what they claim they are doing now. And all of you must remember in spite of what you see, there is God who. <laughs> is it not true? Is there not God? Amen. Someone said, you're making fun of our first lady. No, I'm not. I'm just making a statement of fact. You quote Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream. <laughs> I 
If someone brings out a great expression, yeah, we, we take it on. Are you getting what I'm saying? When I preach, sometimes you go back home and you analyze what I said. And I know those who say, I don't agree with pastor. He said this. I don't quite agree with it. It's, it's permissible. Bless God. Should I read you a scripture? I hope that I can still find it. Because unless our mindset changes, we are just going to continue to meander around and we won't experience much, much progress as a nation and things have come to a healed that there must be change. Judges chapter 5, just a short scripture that I'm going to read. And then I'll call Pastor Joseph Akaya to come and minister to us today. I don't even know whether I should call him Pastor. I always get a little... Even if I say prophet, there are all kinds now nowadays that I get concerned. Verse 6, in the days of Shamga, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, observe the following. The highways were unoccupied. American Standard Version. There were highways, but nobody dared to go on the highways. The travelers walked through Lungu. That's, that's a Hausa expression. You, you, you can't take the main street, you take the Lungus. And the travelers walked by byways. The rulers ceased in Israel, the seas until I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. Now, this is not being gender biased, but what this basically means is that unless people arise and step into their God-ordained destinies in the leadership of a nation, because Clearly here, there was no clear leadership. Not because there were no leaders. But the leaders had abdicated responsibility. The result of that was that wherever you wanted to go, you needed to avoid main highways and just manipulate yourself. You know, that was survival became the name of the game. Until, that was the point of change. Until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods and war came to their gates. Who are the gods of your leaders? It was Eze here who was speaking to us in that meeting and he said, this is my interpretation, 90 something percent of the leadership at all levels in this nation don't believe in God. When they use God, it is to achieve political objective. When they come to your churches and kneel down, be careful how you lay your hands on them. Because you think they're coming for prayer. No. They're coming for votes. That's why the Bible says, lay hands not suddenly on any man. If church leadership would speak out, fewer politicians would go there. Except they truly want to meet God. Now you go to the largest gatherings and congregations and get a microphone. 
to share. Under what unction do you function? The same people will drink blood and they will come and drink of the cup of the Lord. We lack simple discernment because we know that when they leave, they will leave a trail of dollars. If you must be a change agent in Nigeria, one thing that must be eliminated from you is greed. Greed is the seed of compromise. Once it is there, like a mustard seed, it's a matter of time you will soon be compromised. The minister had just been appointed. When she got to her office, the Pam said, called her and said, I made things difficult for the last minister here but I can make things easy for you. I know where the money of the ministry is. We can work together. See, if the seed of greed and covetousness is in you, you swallow that hook, it can no longer be effective. It's not just about leadership of country. If you step into ministry and that seed is in you, Money becomes your God. And every time you preach, all you see is money. When you open your scripture, you see dollars. And Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus. You see, the reason he wept was because there was no money or offering that was taken for him. You find people in churches who left their brain outside. We say, hmm. I never saw that revelation. Like one preacher that I know who used to be my friend. Used to be you. Because now you choose your friends. If not, you, 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 you get the good in you corrupted. He said, uh, Jesus was in a room preaching and four men opened the roof and they lowered their friends. And when Jesus looked up, he said, uh, son, your sins are forgiven you. He said, did you ever wonder why? He said, the reason Jesus said that was because for you to go to somebody's house, remove his roof and lower someone down, you must be rich. When Jesus saw that the man being lowered was a rich man, he said, son, your sins are forgiven you. That's how we read our greed into his creed. And people say, mm, revelation. They were taking notes. For our sakes, he became what? What kind of poverty was it? He became poor so that through his poverty, we may become rich. So what kind of poverty did he experience? What kind of riches did that translate into? It has nothing to do with financial riches. Now, that doesn't mean that his will is not to prosper you, but don't interpret that scripture that way. If not, it will mean he became broke. What it means is that he that was equal to God stepped out of eternity to become equal with man. That's the poverty. So that through his grace, we who are earthbound can upgrade and become equal with God. The riches of his grace. Do we have people here who are willing to arise for the cause of heaven and for the cause of our nation? Can you say, I am willing. I am ready. Lord, grant me the grace, the enablement, the anointing to function and play my role in establishing your kingdom here on earth 
as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. I thought you would clap there. Pastor Fred came into Nigeria a couple of weeks ago and part of what the initiative they introduced in the nation has been bringing the film God is Not Dead, been making it available for people to watch. And it really is great. I'm sure that you're all aware about it. I know that some of you might have gone to watch it when it showed at House on the Rock. This is a man who is possessing the mountain of the media and doing great things in the United Kingdom. From Joss to the UK, and he's helped to confront using the media many of the ills that took place in Joss. I remember he put up a documentary some time back, and that really shook. <laughs> shook some things in the spirit. Just just come and share a few words with us today. Even if it's one minute. Thank you, sir. This God is amazing, you know. I didn't know I'd be here this morning. I was with some other leaders and I knew I had to be somewhere this Sunday. Mm. One minute. Until we are ready to teach the church to die. We are not ready to face the challenges of this nation. Until we are ready to recalibrate our priorities. Then we are just joking. There is so much to say. But the solution to Boko Haram is the church. Already it is obvious the politicians can't do it. Let us start by being the light. It might cost us our lives. But until God is your undertaker, he cannot be your midwife. So he will take you through a process of death so that you can demonstrate life. They've been asking me and been privileged to be on TV a few times. And they say, are you not afraid? I say, when God has taken you through the fire, there's nothing out there. There's so much you have said, sir, that has encouraged me this morning and I'm glad that I'm here today. Early hours, God woke me up around 4 a.m. He says, what I'm giving to you is not for your village. What I'm giving to you is not for your local assembly. It's for your nation. I said, Lord, I'm not a politician. He said, rise up. Go. I joined with the leadership of this work. There's so many people here. Pastor Esther, I salute you. Sir. I mean, there's just so much we can talk about. Arise. But don't wait to be modeled by the dysfunction out there. And let's stop complaining about the problem. Let's be the solution. Thank you. I trust that in the days that lie ahead, we'll have you here and just give you time just to share your experiences, the things God has taught you here locally and is teaching you out there and how you're using the platform God has given you to make a difference. A man by the name Mel Gibson produced a movie that Hollywood would not even support. The man literally liquidated his assets, borrowed money, and produce the passion of the Christ. How many billion people on the face of the earth have seen that movie? The largest crusades probably gather one million people. But through a movie, we must really calibrate, thank you for using that word, our evangelism methodology. And Pastor Joe told me he's going to be here. He's a prophet of God. And I said, well, another opportunity for me to sit and listen. I preach too much. I preached on Sunday. I was in Kaduna. I preached on Thursday. I preached on Friday. 
even I need a Pentecostal break. <laughs> we will be blessed today. Can we stand and receive God's servant to be a blessing to us? Hallelujah. All the way from daylight. Christian Center Thank in you. Lagos Assembly <laughs> Worship Worship Center. <laughs> that is right. Thank you, sir. Joseph Akaya. Thank God you, bless sir. you. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. I appreciate uh, this honor to be here. I actually wanted to come fellowship. I have not been here in a while. And um, I just wanted to come and sit and get blessed. And 